Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. This is your match preview for, without a doubt and without any question whatsoever, Chelsea's biggest fixture for not just this season, but for next season too. Why? Because right now as it stands, we will not be playing Champions League football. Right now as it stands, we won't even be playing Conference League football. We won't be playing any sort of football outside of these Britannic shores, right? <laughs> the British Isles is only where we're going to play. Not even the British Isles, because to go up to Scotland, you'd probably have to play European competition. We'd stay in England, and we're not going anywhere. And that applies to next season, unless, unless we win tomorrow. And then we win the quarterfinal. And then we win the semi-final. And then we win the final. Then we would be playing Champions League football next season. And we will have European football. So this game for me and the way that I see it is our biggest game for this season and for next season. Because next season we won't be playing anything except domestic competition. So in order to change that, tomorrow counts. Tomorrow counts. Tomorrow is everything. I really, really hope that there's a grasp of this because I have to be honest with you, right? I'm coming into this game. I'm not confident. We beat Leeds. whoop de doo <laughs> Yeah, it's a start. It's a start. And that's all we can ask for after the run that we've been on, right? It's a start. But, but, Leeds, Dortmund, come on. Leeds, Leeds relegation team right now fighting for survival didn't actually take the advantage that they could have taken when they did play us at the bridge a, f a few days ago. Um, albeit, we did what we had to do and we got a win. As ugly as it was, we got a win. And as I said, when it comes to styles, I'm not that bothered. The only thing that I was a little bit, not fussed, I understood it, but... 68th minute we already start parking a bus normally we start parking a bus around what 75 80 i understand especially against a top team right but against leeds where the quality is there you'd think go and get a second goal kill this game because leeds if leeds were switched on they really really could have got a result but they didn't tomorrow though different story different gravy Dortmund team, top of the Bundesliga, have won 11 on the bounce, lads. 11 games, or is it 10? Regardless, 10, I think it's 11. I need to double check, but it's 10, definitely. Definitely 10. Could be 11. I think it's 11, because I read that somewhere, and I don't think I'm wrong. 11, or 10 minimum, games on the trot. Win, 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 win. I don't know how many wins that was. I'm hoping it was 10 or 11. <laughs> they're on fire right now. And they're coming to the bridge. And they have a 1-0 lead. Which means that Chelsea have it all to do. Chelsea have to do the one thing that they've not done since... When was it? December? When did we last score two goals? Bloody hell. <laughs> What's happened to this football club? <laughs> What has happened, lads? Oh, my God. The last time Chelsea have scored two goals in a game. I can't believe I'm saying these words. Wow, I've just had a reality check. I can't believe I'm saying these. Anyway, that's what Chelsea have to do tomorrow. Against Dortmund. Now, the one thing about Dortmund that I have to say is an advantage to Chelsea is that both Adeyemi and their number one goalkeeper, out. Out. They're not playing tomorrow. So that is a little sigh of relief. On one hand, we have to be honest here. I'm going to be as fair as I, as I possibly can, right? On one hand, you'd think that I'm not confident. The form we've been on, are we really going to switch everything on? Are we automatically going to look like how we should be looking like? On the flip side, though, yeah, we need two goals. You'd think, okay, if we can just take two of the chances that we get, we'd get two goals. Because the chances do come for Chelsea. We just don't bury them. And then there are some games where we just don't even make any chances. But when you look at the game against Dortmund over in Dortmund, we did create, to an extent. You know, we should have done better. You know, if if we're going to use the language that, we use, that was used at the time, which, to be honest, I wasn't really uh, all for, because at the end of the day, the result is the result. Hence why I'm not that fussed about the Leeds result. But the result is the result. We were hearing... Oh, Potter coached the win. 
<laughs> Potter coached a 3-0 win. We should have scored three. It was unbelievable. We should have done it. XG was through the roof. Listen, we lost 1-0. End of story. <laughs> That's how I see it, right? But when you look in the in the context of things, we could have buried our chances. We didn't. And I'm thinking if we do on the flip side, right? If we do actually put our chances away that we should be getting, we could score two, right? We can score two tomorrow. But are we going to? This is the thing. If some butts, if my grandmother had wheels, she would have been a bike. You know, that's what, G uh, what's it? What's his name? Um, Gino De Campo is his all-time amazing phrase that he's put to the British public over on this morning all those years ago, right? If my grandmother had wheels, she would have been a bike. It's true. <laughs> if some butts and XG and coach to win doesn't get you a result. Did you score the goals? Done. That's it. So tomorrow, we need to score the goals. And we need to do the one thing we've not done since, when was it? December, November, August, last year, 10 years ago. I don't know. When was the last time we scored twice? Um, so it's going to be interesting. The one thing in terms of team news is that it does seem like we are in a good place. In terms of injuries and whatnot, Reese James is looking like he's going to be back. Um... Players that are already back, no concerns there. Kante, even though he's back in full training, but not going to be available. Apparently, it's too soon because he's only trained twice. So, fair enough. Pulisic is in the squad. Um, apart from that, everyone's available. Everyone's available. So, happy days. Except Edouard Mendy, of course. Um, everyone's available. So... On that basis, how should we play tomorrow? Against Leeds, we've done the one thing that many people are now praising, which was going back to a back three, right? Now... As I've said, did it make a difference? I'd be lying if I said it didn't make any difference whatsoever. Did it make the difference that I think many people think it made? No. I honestly think Leeds didn't take the chances that they could have taken. If you're playing a top team, back three, back four, back six, back eight, back one, back 100, right? You're conceding. Because the confidence right now has been low. The, the the lack of intensity and the lack of urgency and the lack of mentality has been the problem in this team. It's not been a tactical thing. I do to an extent, there has been a lack of tactical nuance, right? There has been a lack of being able to get players in the right positions, moving into the right spaces, all of that. And with the back three, hence why I said to an extent, it's because we go back to what we kind of know. The back three does two things for Chelsea. It enables players to go back to a way that they know worked for them, especially under Thomas Tuchel. And in terms of positioning, it does enable players to be able to move into certain zones on the pitch, into certain lanes that does actually help, right? Graham Potter, even in a back four, we always see he does this thing where he always uh, he always sends a front five. There's always this massive hole in between what's a front five, right? You get the striker, the two wingers, and uh, whether it's the two central midfielders, in, in one of them in a the double pivot, whoever, right? It tends to be the one of the midfielders in the, in the double pivot. It tends to be whoever the attacking midfielder is alongside the front three, forming that five. And then you get the one player like Enzo, right, or whoever is sitting, and then there's a massive space in between him and them, and it's like, well, how in the blue hell are you going to get the ball to them? When we're playing in a back four, we tend to do that. We've done that against Leeds in a, it leads in a back three, and I think because of the wing backs, we were able to close the gaps a little bit better, so that does kind of help, and with Reese James there tomorrow, because he's back, it's looking like he's back. I'd be shocked if he's not back. Um, I mean, if he's not back, we're in trouble. But because of that, it does enable us. Chilwell, how involved was he in that game against Leeds, despite him not burying a chance and him not being able to capitalise on a couple of opportunities. But the gaps were closer. And I think that, see, that's the one benefit that I can look at from the back three, right? And playing that way. But in terms of, oh, that's going to transform Chelsea and that's, good, that's, that's the ultimate solution. No, I still believe the ultimate solution is to get another gaffer in. But, but look, for tomorrow, we have to put that aside until after the game, right? Leading up to the game, during the game, there's an opportunity for Chelsea to get to a quarterfinal. It's the last thing that we can play for this, this season. It's the only thing we can play for this season. Personally, I'm still shocked that Graham Potter's in a job. Now, big, he is. We have to deal with that. 
But tomorrow, we need to see something. The bare minimum that I'm asking, because as I've said, I'm not ultra confident. Dortmund are not Leeds. I am looking at Dortmund and going, bloody hell, they are on crazy form. They're one goal up. Chelsea are asking to do the one thing that they that they just have not been able to do in how many games, which is actually show up and and have that have that fight back. Even when you're down, come back, claw the result and win. We've not been able to do that in so long. Hence why I'm just looking at this going, ah, man, I'm not so sure. But do we have it do we have it within us do we have the capabilities to actually get it done i believe this squad does so i'm hoping that something happens tomorrow i really am i really am and then let's get to the quarter final and let's just try and keep going cuz once you're in the quarter final semi final final you're not far at that point anything can happen right like i've said countless times before and in the last 2 years you can begin to dream right it is what it is so Let's see what happens. Um, in terms of the starting 11, let's get right into it. Let's see how I would shape things up. I'll show you on the screen right now. Right off the bat, this would be my starting 11. So obviously we're going to stick with the back three, right? We're not going to go to a back four. We're going to, we, we definitely know we're going to keep doing what, what worked against Leeds, right? Or, or the same setup. And to be honest, when you look at it from that aspect, why change a winning team? You know what I mean? So if it worked, keep, keep it rolling and just keep some form of consistency. Graham Potter has been known to be the, the new Tinker Man, the modern day Claudio Ranieri. But he makes Claudio Ranieri look look uh, look look like he actually has a start in 11. Um, because the amount of times that Graham Potter's changed the team is actually ridiculous. But back three, for sure. Now we have to bear in mind the players that are not in the Champions League squad. Badia Shile, not in the Champions League squad. I can't really get onto anyone too much for that because even I understood it at the time. You're looking at having to accommodate Felix, Mudrik and Enzo Fernandez. Badia Shile is not going to get into the team. I thought that it would be wise to be able to rely on the Fofana, Koulibaly and all the rest that we have. We're going to have to do that anyway. So the back three, Koulibaly, Fofana and Chalaba down the middle. I think it's probably best to have it that way. Chalaba having to... Look, the only other way is to have Koulibaly come central. But then Chalaba would need to go right centre-back. So that would mean Fofana to go left centre-back. Uh, Fofana's best position is right centre-back. So hence why I've put it like this. Chalaba under Thomas Tuchel, if you remember, when Thiago Silva got injured, Chalaba was the one that stepped in alongside Christensen from time to time. And Chalaba actually done a good job there. So I put him central in order to put Fofana at right centre-back, Koulibaly at left centre-back. We have the two wing-backs... Two wing-backs of Ben Chilwell and Rhys James. Uh, I'm not going to lie, yeah? That sounds nice. <laughs> that sounds nice. And hence why this is the one advantage of playing in this formation, is to be able to have those two players, Rhys James especially, as a wing-back. That means they get to bomb forward. They get to become an, an, an attacking threat, an additional goal threat. Because you have to ask. And tomorrow's task, we got to score twice. Where are the goals coming from? Even against Leeds, where are the goals coming from? I have one, one slight, right, window that I can look at and go, yeah, a goal might come from there. And you might agree with me, hence to why I've set the team up in this way and I've picked this start at 11. I'll get to the attacking lineup later on. But having Reese James and Chilwell on the overload and on, on the flanks and adding a threat like they did last season, season before, countless times they came to the rescue for us. Against Leeds, we had to rely on a defender. Tomorrow, we might have to do the same. Bring Reese James and Chilwell into the equation. Why not? So there's that. In the double pivot, Enzo and Kovacic for consistency. They done well against Leeds to an extent, I would say. They actually played quite decent. Um, so keep that going. I would not be against seeing Zakaria on the pitch, as I've said, and I've already mentioned I do believe in terms of balance, having Zakaria alongside either Enzo or Kovacic is probably going to be best. But let's keep this going for now because we do need to attack. There's no point just relying on defending. We actually need to bomb forward and score goals. If not, we're out. So hence why I've gone with this. Now the front three, Sterling. Sterling's been playing really, really well. Last game played really well. So fair play to him. He's definitely in the starting 11. But I would, I would throw him on the right. Because I believe European competition, a player that's not really played, I think there's a chance for Mudrik to come in and, and make a big impact. Big impact. Pulisic is back. He is on the bench, right? 
But Mudrik, chance here against European opposition. I feel like in an environment where Mudrik has already thrived, especially when he was at Shakhtar, Champions League performances were really good by Mudrik. Let's see what he can do here. Left-hand side, we need goals. We need to attack. Go crazy, mate. <laughs> Go crazy. And hopefully 007 does not come into fruition after the initial 007 that we witnessed at Anfield when Man United got absolutely destroyed. So we don't need to go there. You can see the last video that I spoke about that if you haven't already. Up front, Jao Felix has the false nine. Some of you are going to be like, you need to are crazy. We need to score, we need to attack, and you're playing a false nine. I'm playing a false nine. And no, I'm not playing a false nine just because Mourinho done it yesterday against Juve and won one nil. Uh, <laughs> but I'm saying, like I a few minutes ago when I was talking about that small window of where I see a possible goal coming from, I see it coming from Jao Felix. How many times has this guy hit the woodwork? Countless times. He's the only one that I can actually see moving into a space up front and causing some sort of a threat and actually testing the keeper or beating the keeper and missing it by an inch. Kai Havertz has been nowhere near that. Instead, Kai Havertz is literally one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and hits it right at the keeper. Uh, it's, it's, it's insanity at this point. You know, you, you ask Kai Havertz to hit a ball into an open field and he'd still probably miss. It's just crazy. It's absolutely insane. Jao Felix, though, I see some sort of a threat. Now, if we're playing a back three, we can't have an attacking midfielder, right? Which means that Jao Felix either needs to move to the side or needs to go forward. Now, I believe Graham Potter is going to move Jao Felix to the, to the right-hand side, Sterling to the left, or they can interchange, and then Kai Havertz is going to be up front. And we've already heard Graham Potter in the press conference talk about how Kai Havertz is now the penalty taker because Jorginho's left the club. And to be honest, when it comes to penalties, I, I, I don't blame him for that because Kai Havertz is a good penalty taker. But you just know Kai Havertz is going to start. Now, for me, I wouldn't. I think a false nine of Felix allows Felix to come deep, allows Sterling and Mudrik to bomb even more forward, and allows them all to interchange with each other. Two and one. One going in between, going forward, the other two drop back. One comes back and the other two drop forward. And the false nine is able to drop deep, link up the play and move as a free. I honestly think Felix has that ability in him. And if he does move so far forward, he is a goal threat. You get the ball to him, he's quick, he's technical, he knows where to take the shots. And he does work the keeper and he does hit the woodwork and maybe, just maybe, a little bit an inch to the left or to the right and it's going into the top corner or it's going into the bottom corner and Chelsea actually score goals. So I'm going Felix as a false nine. That would be me. I think, as I've said, it alleviates Sterling and it alleviates Mudrik. It allows them to, to, to penetrate themselves into space that Felix can create for them and vice versa. So I don't see why have a Kai Havertz up there that we just are not going to get anything out of when we can have this. That's my initial analysis of how we're going to score goals. Uh, and my only solution on how we're going to score goals, because apart from that, I don't see where the goals are coming from. Again, unless Reese James to the rescue, Chilwell to the rescue, Fofana again to the rescue. We're going to have to rely on the defender. That's the only possible way. So... That's how I would set it up. Let me know down below. Do you agree or disagree? What's your starting 11? Let me know in the comment section below. But that would be my starting 11. Now, if we get into score prediction, I hate this. <laughs> I hate the score prediction. I hate the score prediction because I'm not confident, but I do have this feeling. I can't help but have this feeling because it's a Champions League night. And I can't help but think that Stamford Bridge is going to be rocking. And when Stamford Bridge is rocking on the Champions League night, Chelsea tend to show up at least to an extent. So I do think that there is an opportunity here, right? And I can't help but think that something's going to happen in our favour tomorrow. But in the other side of my head is telling me, Eunice, you're deluded. Stop. Stop. We're getting battered. So I don't know what way to go. I don't know what way to go. I'll be honest with you, yeah? I'll be honest. Logically, logically, we're not winning tomorrow. Logically. Dortmund, if anything, are going to pick up, I wouldn't say pick up three points. There are no three points. But they're going to pick up a win, not even a draw. Narrow win, but a draw, but, but, but they'll, go, they'll go through. 1-0, 2-1 to Dortmund. I can predict with ease. 
But I'd like to think that there's something within the guts of these lads that are going to go onto the pitch tomorrow and with or without a manager, whoever's in charge, whatever, the lads are going to go out there and leave everything on the pitch and the lads are actually going to give everything tomorrow night, right? Because that has been thrown out so many times and dished out by Graham Potter to the press way too many times in games there where we literally did nothing. So tomorrow... I actually expect the lads to actually go out there and give everything. And I know that when these lads do that, they get results, man. They get results. So it depends. It depends. It depends how we go out on the pitch. It depends. Um, my gut is telling me, I have to be real, I, I don't see Dortmund not scoring. And hence why even if we score two, if Dortmund score one, it'll go to extra time. It will go to penalties. So you have to be realistic here. I think it's going to be very difficult for us to go through. But I can see Chelsea two, Dortmund one, and then it goes to flipping, I don't know, to penalties or something. And I, I can't predict that. I'm not going to. So, But I have to be real with you. And I have to say my initial logical prediction is a Dortmund 2-1 win. I have to say that. I have to say that. So let's wait and see what happens. Um, and then we'll come back after it's all said and done and see if I was right or wrong. Um, and let's see if Chelsea do actually show up and actually play in a way that I know is within them where they can get the job done. So let's wait and see. Let me know down below your scores, your lineups, the way you see it going, everything in relation to tomorrow let me know down below much appreciated and i will see all of you after it's all said and done don't forget tomorrow the review will be out after the game and then i will be jumping straight onto big six extra to either uh gloat or to end up in hell again just like last week so we'll see what happens make sure you're there thank you all very so much for watching hit the subscribe button if you are new hit the notification bell to be notified once i've uploaded smash like button if you've enjoyed this and i will see all of you tomorrow after it's all said and done Chelsea season make or break tomorrow night, lads. Go and get the job done. If not, it's all over. Up to you. See you guys tomorrow. In a bit, people. Take care and peace.